Ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. Are we broadcasting? Ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. Good afternoon. We uh, come here today with very mixed feelings and emotions. We come here to take the loss of a son, brother. What a, a combination. When I was reading the, the summary of the show, 30 nieces and nephews, 40 great nieces and nephews. Uh, any of the, the uh, stepchildren here, Stephen, Jerry, or Keith, Lynn? Tell me something about Robert. He's probably the kindest and gentlest man I've known. Uh, he's always happy. Uh, I was felt, so, so peaceful around him. He was uh, so, you know, always easy to talk. He was just a good, darn good guy. He was just one you like to be with and one you like to share time with. Something about Robert. Uh, like he said, he just the most genuine person you'll ever meet. Just never a bad thing to say about anyone. Always in a good mood. Just, just, just a good person. Forgive me. Forgive me. <laughs> <laughs> and that's a very good quality. <laughs> yes, yeah. it should. Lynn, where are you? Oh, she's not here. She's not here. And Carolyn? Not, not here. OK. Um, and for those that we're broadcasting to uh, today, uh, you know, actually, all, obviously, all the praise and sympathy of so many people. We represent a much larger group of people that Robert touched in the course of his life. And I have to say, Michelle, thanks for sending the photo on. The, uh, the wedding photo, that is one of the nicest ones. Uh, though I have to say, he looks a little like a deer in headlights. <laughs> <laughs> and that photo, and uh, uh, his wife has that, uh, that look on her face. He, you have no idea the adventure I'm going to lead you on. <laughs> but you know, it, it's just as well none of us have a clue because we all lock ourselves in our rooms. But today, you know, we're reminded of the journey, the legacy, and the imprint that Robert left. Our readings and our prayers today, you know, remind us of that journey. So we begin in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace and peace of God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Compassionate and loving God, yours is the beauty of childhood, and yours is the fullness of years. Comfort us in our sorrow, strengthen us with hope, and breathe peace into our troubled hearts. Assure us that the love we had for Robert was not in vain. Indeed, make it a part of the store of goodness. You are even now pouring it upon him in your eternal kingdom. Guide us through this time of sadness with the light of your love and the strength of your compassion. Give all of us the strength and courage to face each new day. We ask this through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Our scripture readings uh, today uh, remind us of uh, not only Robert's journey of faith, but also our own journey of faith as well. The reading from the Book of Wisdom reminds us of, of our journey to heaven and the justice that God gives to all of us. And uh, Renee, would you read that for us? blameless life is a ripe old age. The just man, though he die early, shall lie at rest. For the age that is honorable comes not with the passing of time, nor can it be measured in terms of years. Rather, understanding is the Hooray, crown for men, and an unassaulted life, and a testament of old age. He who pleased God was loved. He who loved, lived among sinners, was transported, snatched away, least wickedness, pervert his mind, or deceit indulge his soul. For the witchery of paltry things obscures what is right and the whirl of desire. 
transforms the innocent mind. Having become perfect in a short while, he reached the fullness of a long career, for his soul was pleasing to the Lord. Therefore, he sped him out of the midst of the wickedness. But the people saw and did not understand, nor did they take this into account. Our second reading this afternoon is a reading from the letter of Paul to the Romans. And Paul, uh, we would call a, a bishop or a chief rabbi in today's world. And his writings were a way of sharing a lifetime of wisdom with the communities. And uh, almost like a, a dear Abbey. People have problems, they write Paul, this is what we do. And uh, today Paul's answering a question to the community of Rome that had heard the words and teachings of Jesus Christ. And they're asking Paul, you know, how do we, we actualize all of this? And Paul reminds us uh, that uh, with God's help, we're not streaming in the world. And how do you do it? Uh, that for us? A reading from the letter of Paul to the Romans. If God is for us, who can be against us? Is it possible that he who did not spare his own son, but handed him over for the sake of us, that for the sake of us at will, for the sake of us all, will not grant us all things besides? Who shall bring a charge against God's chosen ones? God who justifies? Who shall condemn them? Christ Jesus, who died, or rather was raised up, who is at the right hand of God, and who intercedes for us? Who will separate us from the love of Christ? Trial or distress, or persecution, or hunger, or nakedness, or danger, or the sword? Yet in all this, we are more than conquerors because of him who has loved us. For I am certain that neither death nor life, neither angels nor principalities, neither the present nor the future, nor powers, neither heights nor depths, nor any other creatures will be able to separate us from the love of God that comes to us in Christ Jesus our Lord. Ladies, thank you very much. Please remain seated for the gospel. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. When Jesus saw the crowds, he went up on the mountainside. After he had sat down, his disciples gathered around him, and he began to teach them. How blessed are the poor in spirit, the reign of God is theirs. Blessed are the sorrow, they shall be consoled. Blessed are the lowly, they shall inherit the land. Blessed are they who hunger and thirst for holiness, they shall have their fill. Blessed are they who show mercy, mercy shall be theirs. Blessed are the single-hearted, for they shall see God. Blessed are the peacemakers. For they shall be called children of God. Blessed are those persecuted for holiness' sake. The reign of God is theirs. And blessed are you when they insult you and persecute you and utter every kind of slander against you because of me. Be glad and rejoice, for your reward in heaven is great. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise Jesus. I want to know again, I accept, I extend all the prayers and sympathy of not only us gathered here today, but that much larger group of people that Robert touched in the course of his life. Our readings and our gospel today remind us of the journey. And the gospel today, uh, is commonly referred to as the Beatitudes, was the, the favorite gospel of the late Cardinal Medeiros. And I had the, the privilege of reading that at his uh, funeral some 40 plus years ago. And the Cardinal chose this gospel because he said, if you understand the Beatitudes, it's the cookbook of Christian living. It represents the things that are most important to us in living a good life. So today, you know, as we come together, I think first and foremost we bring all of different emotions that we find at death. Uh, sometimes we uh, get angry. Angry if that's taken someone we love from us. Maybe before we've had a chance to say a few final words or, or be reconciled to them. Uh, sometimes we feel relief. Believe that a person's journey is at an end, and they finally at peace. 
Uh, most of my ministry was spent uh, in the city of Boston. I was then used at Boston Medical Center for my 17th year of hospice. You know, we live in a world where we think that there's something wrong, we check ourselves in the hospital, they fix us, we come up the front door good as new. Uh, Robert Seth reminds us life isn't quite that simple. And despite all the technology, all of the things we have in our world today, we still don't have the power of life and death. And we get angry, because we live in a world where we want control over everything. And here in the Boston area, you know, we live in the medical center of the universe. Yet this past year, we realized that a, a microscopic virus can debilitate our entire world. And yet we get angry about these things. Uh, sometimes we feel relief. Relief that the person's journey is at an end, and they find their peace. And so often in hospice, the first question I get asked from families is, when will my loved one die? That's the only question I can ever answer, because I've yet to figure it out. You know, people die when they die. In this past year, I've had services for I was patient at five months old, I was at 103. You know, people die when they die. But Robert's death reminds us today how temporary and how fragile human life is. So today we bring up all of the different emotions. Secondly, we remember. And in a very real way, uh, uh, Robert was a gift of God to each person here. And those memories don't die when the person dies. And they're going to be different you know, for each and every one of you. Uh, there's an expression that the, the eyes are the window of the soul. And uh, you know, looking at the pictures, uh, uh, Robert has very kind eyes. And I think that expresses uh, you know, the inner workings of his spirit and his soul. Uh, Michelle, why don't you share a few thoughts uh, with us? saying how blessed we are to have friends and family that have rallied today and made the journey to come and honor our brother, our uncle, our stepdad, and our friend Robert. For those of you who don't know me, I'm the eldest, well, scratch that, I'm the firstborn, <laughs> drove her grandchild, Michelle. Uncle Robert was my grand, my godfather, and I'm also the daughter of Nancy Droder Harris, who he called Freddie. <laughs> and um, he lived with my mom and dad in the early years of their marriage, which helped them to solidify a very close uh, relationship, uh, which they continued to grow throughout the years. Everyone we've spoken to over the, the past few days has had nothing but kind words to say about my uncle. He was such a great guy, a genuine person, never a negative word, always hot, uh, tender-hearted, always a positive vibe, smile on his face. He was also very generous. He gave to many charities, which included some religious charities, the military, St. Jude's, and environmental charities. Music has always been a strong presence in his life, which he passed on to me. Um, he bought me my first record player, now I'm really dating myself, with uh, when I was five. <laughs> and he also included a 45 of the Beatles, She Loves You. And I still have that record today. Um, in my teenage years, he was the cool uncle. He knew all the moves, the dance moves, knew all the lyrics to the songs. He was also um, liked his cars and his uh, sports. We all know that. Between the Triumph and the Porsches, skiing, golfing, and fishing, he kept that cool guy image alive and well. Some of us, like step, uh, his stepson Steve, got to have the privilege of uh, driving that Porsche taking it for a little spin. Um, again, cool uncle status. <laughs> Family was always very important to him. Um, he would make several treks a year down to Pennsylvania for the Droder's Christmas Eve celebration and for Easter, no matter what the weather. Uh, many snowy trips home. I even remember one sweltering Easter that was unseasonably hot where we broke down and had a tow truck and three grumpy kids in the car and he just was there with us. Along with those trips home, he had, um, we could count on the uncles and the elders to get into some mischief. Um, the, the brothers and brother-in-laws would always bring the crazy. 
Um, him and the brother-in-laws would uh, usually lead to some late nights and uh, early morning hangovers. <laughs> the last six years, it's been a week in OVX with all of the family, that's North Carolina, and uh, the brothers, the sisters, the nieces, the nephews, and their extended families, all, all maybe 70 of us on the beach at one given time, we're like looking out in the water and saying, do all those people belong to us? Yes. <laughs> I think we kind of overtook the beach in some spots. Um, and we've had long talks and good laughs and just shared love. So uh, more recently, you know, we'd be sitting catching a little sunset on the bay and just looking over and I'd say, hey, Uncle Ron, L-I-G, life is good. And he'd just give me that wink back and he said, yep, it is. So again, you know, thank you for coming today. And, uh, you know, he's lived a good life, he's loved a good life, and Uncle Robert, and WG, life was good. Michelle, thank you very, very much. Did he ever slip you a few bucks every once in a while? <laughs> <laughs> uh, Nancy, you know all of the family secrets. <laughs> Tell us something about Robert. You have to pull your mask down because we're broadcasting to a million people. Question, you know, I was asking Michelle that everyone wants to know the answer. How did you call him Freddie? Freddie was somebody in, in the cartoons that would be, do silly things. <laughs> so I guess in a comic strip, so I guess that's me. <laughs> <laughs> well, today, of course, you see, you're so fortunate to have such a wonderful person in this life like you. I mean, that was uh, uh, just, and it is a loss, you know. All, and those memories, uh, you, you know, anytime you see someone doing something silly, you know, all of those things uh, uh, pop up to mind. And, you know, with everybody here. There's a, a beautiful passage out of the book of Sirach. Though our ancestors' bodies lie peacefully away, their virtues, their legacy, their heritage live on and on. They live on with their families, they live on with their friends and community. And so it will be with one person. And he used to call me every week just to check in on me and talk sports, you know, and who was going to win the football game and all that, so you were very close. I'm going to miss them. Well, you can never watch a game again without all those memories coming back. Know, right. And, you know, it's interesting, the, the gospel today, uh, as, as I mentioned, the Beatitudes, uh, the three underpinnings of the Beatitude are family, friends, and faith. And those are the three things that, that Robert married in the course of his life. But by your presence here today, the memories. And finally, uh, when someone we love and care about dies, uh, Robert Seth reminds us that all of us will die. We don't know the time, we don't know the place, and we don't know the circumstance. And I think today, uh, you know, Robert is giving us uh, a, a gift. Uh, when I was in the city, I had a grammar school and a high school. And I gave the ninth grade an assignment one year, what is a saint? And they came up with the best definition of a saint that I've come across. You won't find it in a theology book or philosophy book. But they said a saint is a person who does the best they can with what they've got. And you know that's not a bad definition. Because today we pay tribute to a saint. Not a perfect person. But if you look at Robert's life, each step along the way, you know, despite the obstacles and all of the trials and tribulations, he did the best he could with what he had. And maybe that's uh, the gift to us. Because today we have a chance to look at our lives. 
but all the things that have transpired in your life or my life that have brought us here today. And where will we be two weeks, two months, 20 years from now? At the time of your death or my death, what will our life have said to the world? And will people be able to say about us, we did the best we could with what we had? Because if you think about it, God can ask no more of any of us than do that with our lives. Is the Porsche still around? <laughs> that truly was a gift. <laughs> and you have to laugh, but I have an old, I have an old car at home, a classic car. Uh, because all the nieces and nephews are figuring out who's going to get, get it in the will. But um, it's a manual transmission. None of them could drive it. <laughs> We've heard the word of God. We've had a chance to reflect upon that word. And now we join in prayer for Robert. In response to our prayers this afternoon, this Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for Robert. When baptism was given the pledge of eternal life, that he may now be admitted to the company of the saints, we pray to the Lord. We pray for Brother Robert, in the body of Christ, the Eucharist, that he may be raised up on the last day. We pray to the Lord. We pray for our deceased relatives and friends. We pray for all those people who are good and kind of Robert in his life, that they may have the word of their goodness. We pray to the Lord. Lord we pray for all of us who are gathered here this afternoon in faith, that we may be gathered together again in God's kingdom. We pray to the Lord. Lord and we pray now as Jesus taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Any of the family from California, any Californians here? A uh, colleague of mine, uh, Leo Viscaya. Leo was a wonderful writer, did some work for PBS when he was here in Boston. Uh, taught out at USC, uh, Berkeley. And uh, in one of his books, he had a beautiful teaching on death and dying that either reminded me of, of Robert. And he said, I know for certain that we never lose the people we love even to death. They continue to participate in every act, thought, and decision we make. Their love leaves an indelible imprint in our memories, with I comfort in knowing that our lives have been enriched by having shared their love. And really that's why we gather here today, because our lives have been enriched by having shared in Robert's love. Well, I'm not going to speak long about the cemetery. The ritual of the cemetery is very, very simple. Uh, as we welcome Robert uh, to the grave, his place of rest, we bless the grave. We're reminded that the grave is a very sacred and holy place. The grave is a repository of the most sacred relic that we have, the body of the deceased Christian. And the grave is a spot we put flowers and notes and candles and just all of those things remind us of the presence of that person in our life. We also are very privileged today to have the United States Marine Honor Guard for the ceremony and playing of taps and the presentation of the play. In dedication for Robert's service in the United States Marines during his career. Also, and I forgot to ask you, can I write on the casket out of the cemetery? Sorry, put it right on. Uh, this beautiful tradition in the Eastern European uh, uh, culture uh, that uh, when someone begins a new part of their journey, a new home, that uh, you write on their, uh, their residence or their doorway uh, the, the first part of the year, which would be 20, C plus M plus B, 22. And uh, depending on the kind of the legends uh, of the, the family, whether it's Ukrainian, Lithuanian, Polish, they all have a different spin on them. Uh, it's, uh, in the Latin, it's Christus uh, Mansionum Benedictus, the mansion of Christ. But also it was used as a teaching for young children, because uh, usually it was done after the Feast of the Epiphany. And uh, who's the smartest of the nieces and nephews? They're all smart. They're, They're all smart. <laughs> okay. All right. This is good. Michelle. The, if, if I asked you the names of the three magi, what are the names? Charles. Swan, correct? Casper. Yeah, Casper. Casper. Melchior, correct. 
C plus M plus B, the three, the three magi, Casper, Melchior, and Balthazar. And this was a, a nice way to teach the children uh, a little bit of religion. And probably, I don't know if some of you have seen houses where uh, the priest comes in and chalk, he puts above the doorway the year C plus M plus B. And we will do that uh, for Robert out at the cemetery. In peace, let's now take our brother Robert to his place of rest.